that was, it was a very nervous time for us when we started to put them in. Uh, our trigger was actually seeing those Australian stories, those first Australian stories with uh, Peter Andrew's story and the work that he did with Jerry Harvey. Um, that was a light bulb moment. That was a really big light bulb moment. We saw those programs and we thought we saw an, a direct application with our arm. Um, and uh, Charlie, we, we were actually in the situation where the, the rules and regulations were telling us that we could pump as much water out of our creek as we wanted to, uh, but we weren't allowed to put dams in. So we found you know, a halfway point was to put leaky weirs in, which, as you know, don't stop the water, they slow the water. And, uh, but even putting the leaky weirs in, we were very careful just to make them very small so that we were not treading on any regulatory toes. Um, yeah, but it was. It, it, it definitely, we did feel that we were taking a risk by doing it because it's not, it wasn't at that point officially sanctioned. Yeah. I just have a comment to that. One of the uh, things we've already done in our studies is to look at the whole regulatory environment for about 1,500, uh, uh, fifth, about 1500 uh, <coughs> different regulations pertaining to, uh, to land care management, what does farmers and catchment authorities will know what you can do on the other side of that bridge you can't do on this side. So that really has to be all together, and if we can just get a policy philosophy that says we've got to look at the integrated management of soil, water, and vegetation, I think the regulatory regime will then will flow naturally from that. Hopefully, to from a reduction of 1,500 to about 10, I think would be a reasonable uh, uh, starter. But it's a very, very important question that we have to solve for farmers.